When there's an international at the Arms Park, I often wonder what our visitors from abroad think about Wales. The French rugby team, for example. Wales was a nation long before France. Our language is one of the oldest in Europe. Yet, apart from sport, many people abroad know very little about our land. Of course, Wales is small in population. There are just three million of us. But that makes us about the same size as New Zealand or Norway. Wales is also small in size. But as our visitors travel through Wales, they will see a fantastic variety of scenery. And this is matched by the rich variety of our resources. Everyone's heard of Welsh coal. 70 years ago, the ships of the world were fueled by our best steam coal. What few people realize, even in Wales, is that today we still produce more coal per head than any other country in the world. And very soon the world will hear about oil and gas off the Welsh coast. In a world short of fuel, Wales is rich indeed. Welsh steel is also famous throughout the world. Welshmen founded the steel industry in Pennsylvania and in Russia. Today, steel is our most important industry, employing 80,000 men. And we produce more steel per head than any country in the world, except Luxembourg. But although Wales is a strong industrial nation, our visitors will find that three quarters of our land is still unspoilt countryside. On the rich agricultural land of our valleys, we have fine dairy farms. But on the uplands, we have a green desert covered with forests, reservoirs, and rough grazing for sheep. A million acres are undeveloped. But in the future, when the world is short of food, this is where we will return to bring this land into full production. And finally, in the north, our visitors will enter Snowdonia, Irari. Here, too, we find our wealth of resources. When nature built the mountains of Wales, she added copper, lead and slate, manganese and gold. So when our visitor returns to France, he will remember a very beautiful country yet very rich in potential, a nation with a culture of its own. He will think how very lucky we are. But we who live in Wales can look a little closer. Wales today is a strange country full of puzzles. Take Snowdonia again. Today, this is an area of acute housing shortage. 2,000 families are waiting for council houses. Yet in a brickworks in Carnarvon, 10 million bricks are stockpiled and a local factory making doors and window frames is short of work. And to make matters worse, thousands of houses in the area lie empty for 11 months in the year. And let's take a closer look at Mid Wales. This town lies at the foot of a chain of reservoirs which supply the Midlands with cheap water. In Birmingham, the rate for this water is under threepence in the pound. But here, it is seven times higher. Surely something's gone wrong. And can any farmer make sense of the government's agricultural policy? The world is short of food, yet the price paid for beef in this market is so low that many farmers are on the edge of ruin. In 1973 alone, 4,000 Welsh farmers went out of business, one in every eight. Can we really sit back, happy to let our future food supplies be jeopardized in this way? And there are many strange happenings in our industrial areas. This is Shotton Steelworks. Last year, it made a big profit, but the British Steel Corporation wished to finish steel making here. Isn't it strange that when the government bail out companies making a massive loss, a profitable steelworks is threatened? And the same is true at Ebbwvale and East Moors, with their fine record of strike-free production. Wales is a major producer of electricity. Every day, we export 12 million units of electricity. Yet not a single mile of Welsh railways has been electrified. No one seems to have thought of using our own resources to the best advantage. There's a lot that's hard to explain in Wales today. So I asked the Vice Chairman of Plaid Cymru, David Wigley. My experience at Westminster has proved to me conclusively that Wales just cannot get enough time in Parliament to deal with her own affairs. After all, we only get half an hour every three weeks for Welsh questions. We get a Welsh day once a year. We get a Welsh Grand Committee, not even on the floor of the House of Commons, and that meets about five times a year. In total, this barely gives us 24 hours a year to deal, deal with Welsh affairs. And with the complex problems that face Wales today, this just is not sufficient to deal with our problems effectively. We need a full-time Parliament that can concentrate its energy on solving our problems. And another thing that has been proved to me at Westminster is the fact that 
Welsh MPs, however well-meaning, if they belong to the large London parties, have their hands tied. They are forced by the whips of those parties to obey the instructions that are given to them. Indeed, the great advantage being a member for Plaid Cymru is the fact that we can put our constituency and Wales first and always be free to work on that priority. We have so many problems in Wales that need policies of our own to sort out. We think of the housing problems in so many parts of Wales. These are different to the problems in England. In my part of Wales, we have the problem of second homes. We have the problem of leasehold uh, reform, which still persists. We have the problems that arise from old houses, with so many of our houses in Wales having been built before the First World War. We need a parliament with power to act in these matters. And similarly, in agriculture, the circumstances in Wales are different. We have different geography. And again, we need a parliament with the power to pass its own legislation on agriculture. Take water again. This is a problem that is particular to Wales. And we need powers in order to change the Water Act currently in force, in order to give Wales the maximum possible advantage from the water that we have. In other wor words, we need an effective parliament. And you know, today, in the Isle of Man, or in the Channel Isles, they have more power over their own affairs than we do in Wales. Equally in Scotland, this is true. Now, more than this even, we need leadership. And I believe in Wales today, it is Plaid Cymru that gives this leadership. And one person more than any other that has done this is our President Gwynver Evans, who has led Wales, has shown the willpower for our nation to live over the past generation. This short programme is about Wales, our country, the nation for which we Welsh are responsible, the nation to which we owe our first loyalty. Our first loyalty is owed not to the British state, which the leaders of the English parties continually call the nation, but to Wales, which is a nation long before England came into existence. This Wales of ours is a land of unusually great natural wealth and of rich human resources. Its people are among the most able and talented in the world. Given self-government, our material living standards would be at least as high as any one of the five Scandinavian nations, and our cultural life would be secure and brilliant. Instead, we're dying without dignity as a neglected and exploited province on the periphery of the British state, patronised and condescended to. And typically, we've just been told by the English parties that they'll allow us to have a share uh, of our own oil and gas resources when these are brought out of the Celtic Sea. How different was it when Geraldus Cambrensis, three quarters of a Norman himself, said of the Welsh in the middle of the 200-year war against the Normans, their whole mind is on the defence of their country and their freedom. We of Plaid Cymru stand in the tradition of those who fought for their country and their freedom. A great Englishman, Sir Winston Churchill, once declared that a nation which didn't fight for her freedom deserved to be stamped out. We Welsh are a nation. Are we not to fight for any measure of freedom? The future of Wales depends on you, the people. And I appeal to you to act for Wales in this election and help her to win a parliament within three years. It's possible if you give your support to your own nation's cause this time. Help us to rebuild this misgoverned land which has such great possibilities. I'm sure your heart is with us in this struggle. On the 10th, will you give us your support too?